Hi there everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com and this is the continuing saga of the buildup of this 196 scale uh, submarine works. U.S. Ohio class ballistic missile submarine. Um, if you've been following along, you will have seen that I have been documenting the build of this boat uh, fairly intensively for those of you who like to follow along. Uh, and you will also notice for those astute individuals out there uh, that the boat behind me looks awfully a lot like it's done. Um, you are not crazy. Uh, we have had an issue and we're going to talk through that in a second. So unfortunately we had a, a technical mishap in that the SD card that this wonderful video that I had of my build up procedures uh, ended up getting corrupted and I lost quite a bit of data. Now you're going to see in the uh, following clips that uh, I did get some uh, saved, salvaged for you to take a look at, but there's going to be a bit of a jump. For that I apologize. Uh, unfortunately there's not a heck of a lot that I can do to rewind time and show you what ended up happening. So uh, my apologies up front. Take a look at the following. Um, it'll help you get along to where you're at and we're going to pick things back up in the next video um, with an in-depth view of trimming this amazing submarine. So take a look everyone and again apologies for the missing uh, information and uh, we'll talk to you later. All right, let's begin our catch up with the uh, cylinder. Now, <clears throat> as you can see here, the uh, three and a half inch OTW cylinder uh, is fully assembled. Uh, it's got a 14 inch ballast tank in the middle and what you can actually see here is uh, during the trimming of my submarine, it only ended up being approximately half full to bring the boat to neutral buoyancy. I am therefore going to recommend, uh, rather than a 14 inch tank, that uh, if and when you were to order one of these cylinders from me, you asked for the 10 inch. So it would be a 10, 10, 10. Let's take a look at uh, how I set things up. We've got a nice beefy main propulsion motor in here to turn that monstrous prop in the end. We've got some of my click on heavy duty magnetic connectors, the uh, dog bone connector, in the back there, an 82 automatic pitch controller, two standard size servos, six channel receiver. Um, this is an Engel electronic speed controller. Uh, and I just used it because I had it and uh, it fit nicely in the space. Uh, and it makes a really cool sound when it boots up, which is uh, just kind of a fun feature. Got the main conduit that's passing all of the main power and servo leads uh, into the pump compartment. We have the solenoid that shuts off the ballast flow. We have our main ballast pump. We have our remote on off switch that allows you to turn the model on and off just with a key fob, which is cool. For this particular build, I actually elected to go with a standard speed controller to operate the pump versus um, the um, OTW dive module controller and uh, a small servo in the bottom there to actuate our bow planes. We have a lighting uh, output and then we've got our main power lead with a waterproof connector. So that's how I set the uh, cylinder up. Uh, it's a beautiful unit. I really do love these, uh, these three and a half inch cylinders. Like I said, the only difference that I would make uh, were I to do it again, I would make it about four inches shorter. Certainly nothing wrong with this, particularly baffled the way that Bob Dimack does it. Okay, let's take a look at some uh, linkages here. This is the final setup. Uh, you can see what I did rather than having a connective uh, assembly in this really restrictive cone in the back. I ran uh, linkages for upper and lower rudder separately. There's the upper and the lower one down here connected together uh, by this connector and then a single rod that runs out to the front there. So you can see this works really, really well. It gives you individual control over the setup um, of the rudders and you can adjust it really easily out here versus having to fiddle around deep inside the rear cone there. 
Same thing for the dive planes. Uh, you can see them set up there just like this. And then we've got our main prop shaft and it spins really, really easily. Works really good. Here's the dog bone up at the front there. Moving forward, uh, this, uh, you've seen this earlier. This is the, uh, the mounting ring that allows the upper hull to be held in place. A big brass pin here locks it in place so the hull slips down, moves back, locks in place, and then there's magnets here that snap it or hold it so that it does not come undone. We have our uh, mounting bulkheads for the watertight cylinder. Uh, holes here allow for the uh, lugs here and here to slip in, lock it in place. These are duck decoy weights, ballast weights that I adhered in the bottom. They're probably about seven ounces each and I utilized six of them uh, and it works just perfectly uh, in this section of the hull. Here's the forward hold down. Um, the end of the cylinder lines up with the leading edge here and then this simply slips in place like that, locks the front of the cylinder in. So here we are looking at the um, upper hull. You can see uh, how that works in terms of that Z cut right here. We've got our bow plane, or yeah, our bow plane linkages, sail mounted bow plane linkages right here. So the output connects to this magnetic linkage that I'm holding on to, and then this moves up and down to actuate the bow planes. Inside you can see the mounting bracket for the battery compartment, which I built right here. Um, this is actually just clear pipe for um, a central vacuum system, so super cheap. And uh, just 3D printed the bulkheads uh, and these mounting brackets. And this basically slips in place and locks down magnetically. Super easy to get in and out. Um, waterproof connector. Um, the only other weight that you can see is right there, and that's 8 ounces, a full 8 ounce strip, right in the bow. So all of those uh, seven pieces of ballast is all that this boat took. All right, let's take a look at how I'm handling the uh, dry transfer uh, draft hull markings here. Yeah, you can see that this has been applied to the rear of the boat. These are 1 8 inch tall dry transfers from Woodland Scenics. Um, what I did uh, in order to create nice aligned uh, dry transfers cut all of the numbers out, put the tape on my workbench here, sticky side up, marked out the 1 8 inch spacing, which at 196 scale works out to exactly one foot spacing. And I'm applying these um, reversed so that the dry transfer side is up. Uh, so basically mirrored. That all done, I cut out a piece of tape, apply it to the hull, rub it down, and you end up with your markings. All right, let's talk about painting. Uh, and obviously I could have done an entire chapter uh, step by step on the painting of this boat and I wish that I could have done for you guys, but uh, you're gonna have to live with a little bit of a uh, description of uh, how I did it, so apologies. Um, we got three main colors on this boat. Uh, the bottom of the hull, we have a red oxide primer. In the top half, we have a flat black. And then we have a scum line, uh, which is actually self-etching primer. Now, these are all uh, Rust-Oleum products uh, that I utilized, got from Home Depot. So you can certainly get these almost anywhere. Um, as a note, this goes on exceptionally well. This goes on exceptionally well. This, I have come to hate. Uh, this uh, two times ultra cover paint and primer ends up with um, spots, like oil spots, it almost looks like, regardless of the quality uh, of the surface prep, um, it does not work well. So I would go for uh, a straight flat black paint, not a paint and primer together. You always want to go with a flat finish 
on these boats. Um, semi-gloss or gloss looks terrible, absolutely terrible. Um, you, you really do want that flat. And if you look at any reference photos of the real boats, they are definitely matte uh, or flat. From a procedural perspective, um, entire bottom part of the boat was first painted in red oxide. The uh, rear part of the hull was masked, painted in flat black. Then uh, I set the model uh, on its stand on a perfectly level work surface, checked all of the distances from the work surface to the water line, uh, and then used uh, a square, just like this one. Um, and I secured a pencil at that water line uh, and then drew a line all the way around the boat, masked it, misted very lightly with this from a long distance away. Um, you're going to want to kind of like burp it so that you end up with this, you know, variation and speckling that you see going on there. Following that, I removed that uh, tape, that masking tape, and I used a white chalk powder, pastel powder, uh, with a brush and just applied it in there to um, signify or, or to show the scum line, the, the growth that occurs just a, a foot or two below the water line. I use that same chalk uh, on a standard shop towel very, very lightly and I wiped in a downward direction. Uh, and you can see it results in the, like a really cool streaking. If you find that it's too um, blatant for you, you can go over it with a flat, clear paint and it will really, really um, draw that color down, uh, but you'll still faintly see it. I kind of like this a little bit more weathered, um, so I, I left it that way. But again, if you don't like it that strong, uh, a little bit of flat, uh, clear will really downplay that. Lastly, I used uh, rust colored paint and I just went over the uh, scribed lines just really lightly, wiped it off just so that here and there you just see a little bit um, again, follow the contour of the hull. You want to, to streak it um, in the direction that water would end up running. So that's basically the entire weathering that uh, I did on the boat. Uh, again, my apologies. I wish I could have done step by step, but that's it in a nutshell. Well, that is going to bring us to the current state uh, of the boat. And as I mentioned, we're going to move on to trimming this submarine out. Uh, again, sincere apologies for the skipped process in there. It was certainly nothing that I intended. Um, apologies to all of you that were utilizing this as a Bible for a build. Um, you know, certainly the way that I put things together or one way of doing it. Uh, there's lots of ways to skin the cat, so to speak. And this particular build uh, is a little bit different than I would typically do it because of the fact, as I mentioned before, I got to fit it into a standard carry case. So um, thank you for joining me. Uh, the next videos will be much more comprehensive. Uh, we got trimming coming up and then maiden voyage and there'll be a final technical overview of the entire boat uh, setting it up for the pond. So again, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com. Thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.